Hello everyone, and welcome to part 4 of Gary Kasparov's most memorable moments. Uh, as to be expected, uh, part 4 is about uh, game 24 of uh, Kasparov's 1985 match against Anatoly Karpov. Uh, this is game 24, and uh, I, I guess that's kind of to be expected, as it was after this game that Gary Kasparov became the world chess champion. Uh, now, before this match, there was actually a match between Kasparov and Karpov, as most of you probably know, in 1984, a year prior to this match. Uh, but after playing 48 games, uh, the match was still drawn, and then the president of FIDE uh, turned down the match as he said that the match was uh, deteriori deteriorating the player's health too much, uh, physical and mental, and uh, that the match will be rescheduled uh, for 1985. And then it will restart with a score of 0-0. Uh, to zero. So uh, this is a game from their 1985 match, and now uh, the match is limited to 24 games. Uh, and in game 24, uh, Kaspa uh, Kasparov is leading uh, with a score uh, of 12 to 11. So Kar Karpov has the white pieces in this game, and uh, in order to retain his title, uh, Karpov must win this game with the white pieces, otherwise Kasparov wins the World Chess Championship. So similar to their 1987 match in game 24, uh, where Karpov was up a point and Kasparov had to win with the white pieces, uh, now, now the situation is reversed. So let's see this game. Uh, Karpov opens with e4, and we have c5, the Sicilian defense. Uh, knight to f3, d6, d4, c captures, knight captures, and knight to f6. Knight to c3, and a6, the knight of variation. Uh, we have bishop to e2, and now e6, uh, transposing into the Scheveningen. Uh, white castles, Kasparov goes for bishop to e7, and now f4. Uh, Kasparov castles, we have king to h1. Uh, getting the king out of this diagonal, so there are no any nasty pins. Uh, queen to c7, and now a4, not allowing b5. Uh, knight to c6, bishop to e3, uh, and rook to e8. We have bishop to f3, uh, rook to b8, and uh, queen to d2. And uh, what do you play here? Kasparov goes for bishop to d7. Uh, knight to b3 by Karpov, and uh, pressuring that a5 pawn. Uh, Karpov's idea is pushing the pawn to a5 and then playing bishop to b6. So Kasparov prevents this. He plays b6 and uh, now Karpov uh, goes for the attack. He plays g4. Uh, we have bishop to c8. Now that Karpov pushed g4, uh, he kind of weakened the, the king's position here. So now Kasparov will play bishop back to c8 and uh, maybe place it to b7 to kind of counter this bishop on f3 and maybe, maybe harass the white king in the future. Uh, Karpov pushes g5. Knight to d7, and now queen to f2. Uh, it's, it's nicely pressuring the b6 pawn, also ideas like uh, queen to h4 will be available in the future uh, after Karpov uh, figures out how, how to make a nice rook lift. Uh, bishop to f8, uh, pr preparing g6, making room for the bishop here, and uh, also uh, uh, kinda, kinda releasing this rook, but, but not just yet. Uh, bishop back to g2, we have bishop to b7, and rook a to d1 now. g6, bishop to c1, uh, now Karpov uh, decided to make a rook lift, so he has to get the bishop out of the way from e3, the idea is rook d3, rook h3, and maybe queen to h4 in the future, threatening the h7 pawn. So rook b to c8, uh, we have rook to d3 now, knight to b4, attacking the rook, and rook to h3. Uh, bishop to g7 by Kasparov, and here bishop to e3 by Karpov, and uh, this is uh, this is the moment Kasparov mentions uh, as his fourth most memorable moment uh, in over the board uh, history. Uh, what, what to play here with black? Uh, he says uh, Karpov created a very nice position here with the white pieces. Uh, white is better here, and it's very hard for black to actually find the plan. Black just has to wait out uh, and see what white will do as. That's kind of the whole point of the quote about the board. Uh, you have to make tough decisions and you have to resist pressure. So you don't want to make, make anything happen with black here. Uh, you just have to resist uh, any idea white has. So white is definitely planning f5 at some point uh, to, to break open the position here and go for the weak, weak king here. And uh, also uh, an idea is bishop to d4, exchanging the dark square bishop and then bringing the queen to h4 and then going for the h7 pawn. So that's, that's the idea here. You definitely don't want to do a move like bishop captures on c3. Although this does, this does seemingly win a pawn, but uh, let's just show it. 
Uh, if you play this, then bishop to d4 wins the, wins the game immediately. You move the queen, and then rook captures on h7. Rook to h8. Checkmate is the threat. If you capture queen, queen h4, check, king g8, and now queen to h8. Uh, this is checkmate. So it's a very delicate position, and uh, you definitely have to do something. And uh, this is uh, the move Kasparov says that it was the hardest move to find uh, over the board. Uh, and the move he's talking about is rook to e7. And if you look at this move, it uh, does look like a weird move. You just placed the rook where it doesn't really do anything. Uh, it's probably your least active, uh, active piece now, that rook on e7. Uh, but it actually does protect the f7 pawn. Uh, it allows you to push f6 or f5 to protect the bishop on g7. And even if the bishop is exchanged, then the rook will be protecting the h7 pawn. So it, it does have a, a lot of purposes uh, here on e7. Another thing is uh, you're still, you made a useful move and you're still letting white decide what to play. And I don't think uh, Kasparov meant that this was actually the hardest move to find because it's, it's a hard move to find. Uh, rather, it's because uh, it's the most important game of his career. If he doesn't lose this game, he becomes the world champion. So that's why you have to, he had to uh, really ride out the pressure and find a move like rook to e7. Uh, and he said that uh, Karpo was walking around the room uh, and when he came back to the board and saw this rook to e7 that uh, Karpo was not pleased and uh, he knew that something uh, something went terribly wrong for him. So here he played king to g1, uh, rook to e8 now, the other rook comes from c8 to e8 now, Kasparov doubles up. Again, a weird looking idea as those doubled rooks aren't really pointing at anything. Uh, rook to d1 and here we have f5. Now, if e captures on f5, then Kasparov will release his doubled rooks. Uh, g captures on f6 uh, en passant, we have knight captures, and rook to g3 now. Uh, Kasp uh, Karpov could have captured on b6 immediately, uh, but he doesn't like the idea of knight g4. So before, he will play rook to g3, stopping knight g4. Uh, but here, rook to f7, Kasparov again offers a pawn, and here, uh, as Karpov doesn't really see any other way he could gain advantage, he grabs the pawn. Bishop captures, uh, we have queen to b8, and now bishop back to e3. Now we have knight to h5, attacking the rook, rook to g4, and the knight back to f6. Kasparov is uh, happy with a draw here. Uh, rook to h4, uh, we have g5 now, attacking the rook and breaking up this pawn structure. So f captures on g5, and now comes knight to g4. Uh, attacking the queen from the knight and the rook, also the knight is attacking the bishop on e3, uh, queen to d2, and now knight captures on e3, queen captures on e3, and now knight captures on c2, uh, grabbing a pawn, also attacking the queen on e3. Uh, so queen b6, and here we have bishop to a8, offering a trade of queens. Uh, rook captures on d6, and this was, uh, this is the move, uh, Karpov has to make something happen. If if he doesn't go for the pawn, if he plays, uh, this was also an option. Queen captures queen, uh, but after rook captures and uh, bishop to h3, <clears throat> uh, offering the knight on b3, rook captures and now bishop captures on e6, attacking both rooks. Uh, rook captures on b2 and now bishop captures on f7 with check. King captures and now rook captures on h7. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty complicated position, uh, Karpov would be up two pawns, but Kasparov would have the bishop pair for a rook. So, it's a pretty equal position, but uh, whether, whether Karpov could uh, go for something, uh, as those pawns can be pushed, maybe h4, h5, but prob probably not going to be able to, to go for a win here. So, after this bishop to a8 move, he decided not to trade queens, he decided to play rook captures on d6. Uh, rook to b7 by Kasparov, uh, now the queen has to move and the knight is unprotected on b3. So queen captures and now rook captures on b3, Kasparov grabs a, po uh, a piece. Uh, we have rook captures on e6 and now comes rook captures on b2. Uh, queen to c4, uh, threatening some discoveries, but after king to h8, uh, there, is, there is no move uh, Karpov can try here. Uh, it does seem like he does have a lot of pieces here in the attack, uh, even a move like g6 looks very tempting, but after h6, simply uh, locking down this position, there there is nothing for him to do here. Uh, rook captures, queen captures, and there is no no plan here for Karpov anymore, he's down a piece. 
so after this king to h8 move, uh, he saw that he couldn't really do anything, uh, so he tried the move e5, simply trying to create something happen, uh, hoping for a blunder from Kasparov. Uh, but Kasparov simply played queen to a7, this is with check, king to h1. Uh, if you play king to f1, then simply knight e3, this is check, this wins the queen. Uh, so he played king to h1, now comes bishop captures, king captures, and uh, knight to d4, a discovered check from the rook here. Uh, and in this position, Karpov resigned game 24, and uh, Kasparov was proclaimed world chess champion. Uh, why did he resign? Well, there's nothing he can do here, and there are even no more tricks in the position. He's losing the rook on e6. Uh, so let's say king moves, knight captures, and now you could try maybe something with rook captures on h7, but uh, after a couple of more moves, uh, the king finds uh, a nice safe place on f8, and, and there's no point in doing anything like this, especially not in a world chess championship game, a final game. <clears throat> As you know, everyone in the world playing chess will see this game, so we don't want to look like a, you know, like like uh, you're just uh, making some nonsense moves. So yeah, uh, that was the game. After this, knight to d4 move, I discovered check uh, from the rook. Carpo resigned, and it was uh, the 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 fourth and probably the most memorable moment of Gary Kasparov over the chessboard. Uh, Mikhail Tal congratulated Kasparov on his uh, impressive victory over Anatoly Karpov using his aggressive style. Uh, and Tal also said that uh, he only wishes that Kasparov stays uh, on the throne uh, much longer than Tal did, uh, as Tal reigned for only one year. So yeah, uh, that's the game, that's the, this little series I had, uh, Kasparov's most memorable moments, four videos. Uh, I do hope you checked out uh, video number three as well, although I, I made that video like four months ago, but uh, still, still do check it out, it's a very nice 19 move game between Gary Kasparov and IBM's Deep Blue. So yeah, uh, I would like to thank uh, Yashit Singh and Peter Shaftel for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check all my previous videos here. They will both be uh, from this series. Um, thank you all for watching and I will see you soon, uh, probably returning to some good old classics.